discover why many officials believe Falcon 9 surpasses Saturn V in power despite the cost difference. Dive deep into a debate on space technology as we explore the capabilities and advancements of these two impressive rocket programs. Join us as we unveil the secrets of these legendary vehicles and witness for yourself which reigns supreme in the world of aerospace engineering. Prepare for a mind-blowing journey through space history and innovation with Falcon 9 vs. Saturn V. Is the Falcon 9 truly mightier than the legendary Saturn V? Find out as we unravel the mysteries behind these incredible rockets. Get ready to be mesmerized by the wonders of space exploration and witness the clash of the titans Falcon 9 vs. Saturn V. SpaceX's meteoric rise to prominence has reshaped the space industry in ways unforeseen just a decade ago. Once considered a lucky startup in a field dominated by long-standing giants like NASA and Boeing, SpaceX has defied expectations in ways that no one has ever achieved in the realm of space exploration. Their journey from a scrappy startup to an industry leader has been marked by a series of groundbreaking achievements that have fundamentally transformed the way we perceive and engage with our space. This has been like a splash of cold water on NASA. The U.S. Space Agency has just been unable to do it for many decades now. SpaceX has been guided by a relentless pursuit of innovation and excellence. Falcon, Dragon, Starlink, Starship, Starman. These are considered the achievements that SpaceX has contributed to our spaceflight vernacular, showing just how far the company has come in its first 22 years. Not only that, they're considered the leaders for unique records in the world, something that NASA can only dream of achieving. First, it's their groundbreaking rocket technology that's now considered standard practice uniquely for SpaceX, and that's reusability. In the realm of space exploration, traditional rocket economics has long been characterized by a disposable mindset, where rockets are launched once and discarded, leading to exorbitant costs and significant environmental impact. However, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket has shattered this paradigm with its groundbreaking reusability. Evolutionizing the economics of spaceflight and leaving a profound impact on the industry. Unlike conventional rockets, which are designed for one-time use and subsequently discarded after each mission, Falcon 9's reusability fundamentally alters the cost structure of spaceflight. By enabling the recovery and refurbishment of key rocket components such as the first stage booster, SpaceX has dramatically reduced the pre-launch cost, making space access more affordable and sustainable than ever before. For further perspective, SpaceX sells Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launches for $62 million and $92 billion respectively. Meanwhile, the Atlas V is not quite as powerful as the Falcon 9. Each customer also pay varying amounts for getting aboard Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy depending on the size of their satellite, in line with industry practice. So a fleet of tiny cube sets from different organizations as an example may typically pay lower costs for their rideshare than the operator of the main satellite that is also atop the Falcon 9 on the same launch. Moreover, Falcon 9's reusability has played a pivotal role in SpaceX's ability to significantly increase its launch frequency in recent years. With the ability to refurbish and relaunch Falcon 9 boosters multiple times, SpaceX has achieved a cadence of launches that far exceeds what was previously thought possible. However, it must be said that the Starship is the ultimate dream-changer, the crown jewel in SpaceX's arsenal of secret weapons. If the Falcon 9 can be partially reusable, then the Starship will be fully reusable, offering countless benefits to the aerospace industry, particularly in terms of cost, a critical issue often discussed in the allocation of financial resources for U.S. space missions. Due to its complete reusability, the Starship seemingly only incurs costs for fuel and refurbishment after each launch. The Super Heavy Starship system is projected to use only $900,000 worth of propellant to make it to Earth orbit. Operational costs overall could be as low as $2 million per flight must suggest it in 2019. If that's the case, Starship will be truly revolutionary, slashing the cost of access to space like never before. Compared with NASA's rocket programs like the Saturn V, it was very costly, prompting many officials to complain and it could also be one of the reasons leading to its cancellation. With no reusable components, each Apollo spacecraft launched to the moon and back was estimated to cost around $1.5 billion in today's money. NASA's subsequent project, the Space Shuttle, was seen as a practical approach to address the cost issue of space travel, as it was designed for reusability. The shuttle would launch as a rocket, 
re-enter, and land like an airplane, and then be ready for a new flight. But most importantly, the cost of each flight would be just a fraction of the cost of each payload. But technical, economic, and political reality did not allow for this. Compromises were made, the amount of work that each shuttle needed for another launch was grossly underestimated. After each flight, many of the orbiter's protective thermal tiles had to be replaced, an inexpensive task. Two solid rocket boosters had to be recovered from the sea and refurbished. The multi-million dollar external fuel tanks were thrown away each time. Plus, the shuttle had people on board, its own unique and expensive problem. At the end of the shuttle program, in 2011 each flight had to cost about $1 billion. In reality, the shuttle became the most expensive means of getting into space. Meanwhile, a single-use super-heavy starship can bring the cost down nearly 10 times to about $150 a kilogram. However, high reuse of the super-heavy starship will bring the cost down to $10 to $20 a kilogram. At the beginning of the space race, NASA was in the business of taking risks. This was necessary to achieve a singular goal, to be the first nation to reach the moon, within just eight short years. This has become necessary for NASA's political survival. Many observers have noted that when the government cut Apollo's funding, NASA found itself in an existential battle, how to justify its continued existence. In order to keep the gravy coming, NASA was forced to make safe political choice. It couldn't survive by bringing pie in the sky plants to Congress. That's why the Constellation program, the most recent plan to return America to the moon, failed. It's why the new Orion space capsule won't carry astronauts until 2025. Rather, perhaps the mission of NASA should be changed to bring back risk-taking. If SpaceX can produce and fly the rockets at a fraction of the cost of a government program, then perhaps they should be in the rocket business and NASA should be in the space exploration business. Meanwhile, the Dragon capsule, carrying four astronauts, was launched by Falcon 9 at 10.53 p.m. Eastern. Prior to liftoff, the crew boarded the capsule and were prepared for flight. Approximately 2 minutes and 34 seconds after liftoff, the boosters separated from the second stage and safely returned to land on landing zone 1 around T plus 7 minutes 34 seconds. Meanwhile, the second stage continued its flight, separating from Dragon approximately 12 minutes and 7 seconds after liftoff. Dragon proceeded with the remainder of its journey to the International Space Station, or the ISS. The crew is slated to spend about half a year aboard the ISS and is expected to return to Earth around August of this year. After the successful launch, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson immediately posted a congratulatory tweet. Crew 8 is on their way to the space station. Congratulations to NASA and SpaceX on a successful launch. We look forward to new scientific discoveries that will help fuel this new era of space exploration. Onward and upward. The recent mission also marked several milestones for SpaceX. They have achieved the significant milestone of launching the 50th person into orbit, marking over four years since the first launch in 2020. This flight also represented the fifth launch of Crew Dragon hardware, specifically the Endeavour capsule. During the Demo 2, Crew 2, Axiom 1 and Crew-6 missions. SpaceX has conducted a total of nine missions with NASA astronauts, with eight official missions falling under the commercial crew program and four private missions, including Inspiration-4 and three Axiom missions. In terms of the commercial crew program, SpaceX has been assigned to launch up to 14 missions. They have now completed more than half of this task. Many ahead, they have six additional missions, scheduled until 2030, along with numerous other private missions awaiting launch. Therefore, we can anticipate further records being broken in the near future. This can indeed be viewed as a commendable effort by both the SpaceX team and NASA. Despite facing delays of up to 10 days initially to alleviate the workload for Pad 39A and later due to weather concerns, the mission proceeded smoothly once these challenges were addressed. This successful mission serves as a solid foundation for SpaceX as they continue to progress towards their next objectives. And in the final segment of today's episode, let's delve into NASA's upcoming lunar endeavor, the Viper mission. This lunar rover, known as Viper, which is short for Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover, is rapidly advancing toward its mission on the lunar surface. Scheduled for launch later this year, Viper will embark on its journey aboard SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket, 
with a targeted launch window around November. Recently, it achieved a significant milestone on its path to the moon. However, project manager Dan Andrews wrote in a NASA blog post on Wednesday, February 28th, all of Viper's flight instruments are installed and the rover is more than 80% built. This is a major accomplishment and shows the great progress being made by the dedicated Viper team, who are excited to see the rover come together. Viper's mission is critical for NASA's future lunar exploration efforts, for NASA's future lunar exploration efforts. Sitting near the lunar south pole, Viper will embark on a quest to locate water ice and other resources essential for sustaining future Artemis missions. These missions will include historic milestones, such as stepping foot on the lunar surface during Artemis III slated for 2026. Over a span of 100 days, Viper will traverse the lunar south pole region, gathering crucial data to pinpoint the locations of water ice deposits and assess their accessibility. This pioneering endeavor will mark the first ever resource mapping mission on another celestial body, laying the groundwork for establishing a sustainable human presence on the moon. Viper's mission represents a significant advancement in lunar exploration. While previous satellite missions have provided valuable data on lunar water, Viper will offer a more detailed and intimate examination of the lunar surface. Equipped with scientific instruments and a drill capable of reaching depths of 3.3 feet or a meter, Viper will conduct thorough scans and investigate soil composition, particularly in permanently shadowed craters known to harbor ice. These shadowed regions among the coldest in the solar system are believed to contain ice that has remained undisturbed for billions of years. Viper's exploration of these areas will be challenging as it navigates complex terrain and endures the extreme lunar environment, including frigid temperatures. With its preparations and capabilities, Viper is poised to achieve NASA's first comprehensive success following setbacks with previous missions like Astrobotic and IM-1. Its findings will play a crucial role in laying the foundation for the success of future Artemis missions, providing vital insights for sustained lunar exploration in the years to come.